And no, I'm not talking about you going with short sleeves hot. <laughs> it was more like it's August in Ethiopia hot. <laughs> Growing up, I remember sitting in my grandparents' living room sweating, trying to figure out my relation to these people who not only didn't seem to share the same environmental needs as me, but who had reached an age that I could barely comprehend. But my grandparents were firm believers in the three F's of life. Family, faith, and food. So each Sunday for 29 years, I wore the heat and religiously showed up to them. Every day I turned 14, my father put me on a boat. In my pocket, he stuffed 200 lira in the address of a cousin in a place called Hoboken, New Jersey. Only advice he gave me, tango familiar. If you just said that in English, it would mean I support the family. But in Italian, it means more, much more. It means I'm a man. I am doing well for my woman and my children. I have a reason for being alive. Tango familiar. The very next day, I arrived to learn that my cousin had moved for a faraway land called Brooklyn. So. For six weeks, I lived underneath a pier off the Hudson River, trying every day, every minute of every day, to find a way to earn enough money to get back home. I was the little sister of seven girls, and Frank was the first man, no, the first person to ever notice me. He was making a dollar a day as a carpenter's apprentice, and I thought that was a fortune. He promised me that if I married him, he'd become a fine carpenter. And he built me, me, an entire home. And he did. He became a wonderful carpenter. And he built for me this beautiful home. My grandmother, I never made it through grammar school. Never even learned how to drive a car. But locked that woman in the kitchen with the tomato, pasta dough, and garlic sauce? The woman was Einstein. By my 29th birthday, my parents moved to Florida. And my sister Melissa to San Diego. Before she left, Melissa told me that the best thing about being an American was that you could stay in the country and still move 2,000 miles away from your family. I stayed with my grandparents. Each Sunday, taking a bus from the city, but one Thursday, something happened to me. Something important, and what I had to say to them, it, it just couldn't wait. Hey, grandma. Hey, hey. Nick, your grandmother's going to try to get you to do something for her. Refuse. He has no time to do any of your favors, either. What do you have to do? Chinese food. Chinese? Nah. You're telling me that's food? Everyone else eating this seem to think so, yes. 30 years ago, I had dinner at a Chinese restaurant. To this day, I have no idea what I ate. I'll make you one. Man, I'm full. Fine, I'll make you a sandwich. Man. You look hungry. How? Tell me exactly how do I look hungry. You're breaking my heart, folks. All right, all right. Maybe a small sandwich? What do you want on it? I don't care. How about Coca-Cola and ham? Perfect. Good. I'll make you a Coca-Cola and ham sandwich, and you tell your grandfather he can't drive no more. I don't what? listen to her, Nick. Two days ago, at a Grand Union parking lot, he needs to put the car in reverse. Goes forward. I thought it was in reverse. I put it in second. Ride into a Japanese car. Thank God no one was killed. I barely did it, the thing. Two weeks ago, at a 7-Eleven, he needs to step on the brake. He steps on the gas pedal. We go very fast for about two feet. Right into a Japanese car. Thank God no one was killed. Gramps, we've talked about this. You shouldn't be driving anymore. You're telling me what to do? I used to change your diaper. You told me, and I appreciate it. He never changed your diapers. Look, Gramps, you know it's dangerous for you behind the wheel. So you're saying I'm too old to drive? Your reflexes are. A little slow. I get in the car with him, I scream the entire way. She's a real pleasure to drive with. All right, all right. And why don't you finish making the sandwich? I'll talk to you. And can you turn on the air conditioner? It's sweltering in here. Oh, that's crazy. It's only June. But it's hot. The air conditioner doesn't go on to the 4th of July. I'll open the window. And Frank, you listen to your grandson. <sighs> Grant, come on. You know something terrible could have happened. My 
first call. 1941 to soda. It cost $53 more than I could possibly spend, but ooh, once I laid eyes on it with chrome wheels, black leather inside, dashboard that was the most beautiful sight I ever saw. See my, you know, and I spent three months, nights, just working, shoveling coal into some restaurant furnace just so I could get that 53. And you know, once I did get that 53, and once I got that car, once I held my hands on that steering wheel, that's when I knew I could make a life for my family. If I could own this car, I could make a life. Tango for milk. I got another set hidden in my tools. Just promise you only drive in emergencies. Yeah, right. yeah. I was the first in my family to receive a good job with a union in the Ford's automobile factory. And the way I got the job, see, was I told them I was Irish. I had to, because back then, the most famous Italians in America were the Pope, Sacco, and Vanzetti. And did they look at us and think the Pope? No, Sacco and Vanzetti! My father's folks, Nantio and Emma, lived two doors down. And every Sunday, they'd also join us for dinner. Both children of hardworking and astute immigrants. They married at 17 and had two sons. My father and his brother Nick, who was killed in Korea. The day I married nuns, my mother sat me down and she told me something amazing. She said, Emma, just because you're his wife does not mean you're not as important as him. Speak up for yourself. Say how you feel. Don't become one of these women that get lost behind their family. So, I told Fords my name was Ian Sean O'Malley O'Brien O'Sullivan, and they gave me the job. So while nuns went to work, I made us a beautiful life at home. I stood on an assembly line for 27 years to give my wife and sons the life they deserve. And yes, we struggled, but we made our way because we're a family. Dango familia. Dango familia. Dango familia. They were the loudest people I've ever met. Hey, Nikki. Oh, Nikki. Hey, Nikki. Hey, it's a pleasure to see you on a Thursday. Glad to see you too, Gramps. I have to make some. I have to make an announcement. Wait, 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 wait. First, first, I need to take a picture. Of what? Of you. Why? I've had two pictures sitting in this row since last Easter. Stand by your grandmother and smile. Gramps, I, I got this announcement. It's one picture. Gramps. One picture. Fix your hair nice. Damn. Stop. All right, all right, Gramps. Shoot. But you're not happy. I'm not happy. Why would I take a picture if you're not happy? Okay. Make me a copy, man. I'll pay you for it. Enough with all of that. I have an announcement to make. Um, actually, you remember that present you bought for us, um, the one we don't know how to use? The answer machine? No, no, um, the CPU. VCR? Right, right, um, we need the receipt. It broke? No, we hate it. We don't hate it. It's just that it's too expensive for us to enjoy. Why are you worried about, worried about the expense? I bought it for you. Give us the receipt and we'll give you your money back. I don't want the money. It's too much to spend on us for a BCB. It was for your 60th anniversary present. Fine. We'll just keep the $10. Look, what I have to say is... So, Nikki, Nikki, guess where your grandmother wants to drag me? Uh, Again. I'm sorry. Atlantic City! Oh, with all the senior citizens from St. Anne's. Look, Gramps, I got this announcement. You sit in traffic for four hours with a busload of 80-year-old Catholics carrying these giant bags of waters. You see what he's complaining about? He gets a free air-conditioned bus ride and $30 free worth and shit. Look, what I have to say is- You want to know what I did last time? I walked into Donald Trump's. Found myself a $30 check. 
found a five foot buffet, ate all day, and came home with a twenty-five dollar profit. I told him that money was not for him to keep. The Catholic Church gives it to you to gamble, and then on Sunday you put it in the poor box. I'm not putting it in the poor box. We're poor. We are not poor. Why are you giving me twenty-five dollars? I don't know, but she won't let me keep it. I forgot what you wanted on the sandwich, so I just put provolone and cheese. How did I come from these people? My my grand my parents. Maybe I can understand, but. These people. Nicholas ate Chinese food tonight. That's like eating cancer. He also said I can't drive no more. Good, the world has got a whole lot safer. Look, I'll give you the receipt from the VCR. We'll talk more about the driving. I'll eat the sandwich. Can I just please say what I have to say now? Wait! I feel a trap. Me too. It's a hundred, it's a hundred and fifty degrees in here. I forgot all about it. Good thing you got that, Nan. For a second, you almost let air seep into the room. Now, does everyone have everything they need? Is anyone disturbed by any unbearable drafts? Oh, he's getting married. Uh, not getting married. How can he get married? He doesn't even have a girlfriend. Can we what, not? What about Donna? We will not discuss Donna. That subject is closed. I broke up with that girl two years ago. Oh, I thought she broke up with you. Can we change the subject, please? Oh, she has such nice hair. Oh, I was so sure you two were going to get married, Nikki. I mean, every time I went to a party, every time I save all the little plastic knives and forks, and I save them for your wedding shower. I'll get it. No, man, let the answer machine get Ah, oh, no, nah, Nick, that machine broke. It broke? Yeah, every time we press the button, someone was yelling at us. <laughs> Chris, that was people leaving messages. <laughs> Nicholas, it's your parents. Nicholas ate Chinese food tonight. Nick, why your parents moved to Florida? God only knows. They spend the first 50, 60 years of their life nice and close to the parents. Who raised them? And then boom, your father gets a little sinus condition and moves down to Fort Lauderdale. To live with a bunch of old people who love humidity. You're a good boy, Nikki. Staying near your grandparents and all. A small distance. Talk now. Hey, your son said I can't drive no more. So uh, come over. Maybe we can sit in my car and pretend like it's moving. And then all your right. sister gets married and moves to San Diego. Who the hell moves to San Diego?
okay, well, I work in marketing, which is kind of like advertising. You know, commercials, but I don't exactly make the commercials, I, how do I explain this? Plan the overall strategy for commercials, and newspapers, and various other types of media, like brochures, billboards, and internal and external sales presentations. Well, with the promotion, and this is exciting, I'll be able to implement, coordinate, and develop all of these strategies within the top 20 market. Well, whatever the hell you do, just know we're damn proud of you. Okay, well, the thing about the job is, I have to move. Out of the city? Oh, thank God. Oh, you should move in the fire. Yeah, no rent, four meals a day. Uh, no, the, the job is in Seattle. Where the hell is Seattle? <laughs> I think Brother Noli has a beach house there. Exit 94 the Parkway. No, no, no. She lives further down by the, uh, the, the food tap. Wait, no, 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 no. I think I know where Seattle is. Uh, Washington? Not the far away Washington. I mean the close Washington. Uh, all the way by California. Nicholas, is this true? It, it's in Washington State, yes. Look, I just got the promotion today. My, my head's still swimming, but now would be the time, right? I'm young, unattached, so there's nothing really keeping me here. And what about us? Well, yeah, except for you guys. My parents said it would be a wonderful opportunity. Plus, I've grown up in this area. I went to college here. I've never lived anywhere else. I never lived anywhere else. Look, I know this might come off as a bit of a shock. Shock? No, why would it be a shock? First, your, your parents moved to Fort Lauderdale, then your sister moves to San Diego, gets married, and has my great-grandson. Graham. I mean, my great-grandson. I've seen him, what, twice? Do you know what that's like to have, be old enough to have a great grandson? And you know, last time we got off the plane, I run up to him with my arms out all stretched, and he just runs away. He just thinks I was another old person who wanted a hug. Yeah, please, I. I don't know if I'm prepared. Is it going to go? Moving. Gotta catch a meeting. It's about the promotion. Uh, I'll run late, man. Sorry, I gotta go. Uh, my father taught me when I was a little boy. Um, your grandmother 
I found it the other day at a garage sale, so I decided to start taking lessons at the high school. In fact, I took one last night. Wait, the high school? How'd you get there? You didn't drive. I walked 45 minutes in the dark. In fact, if I drop dead, I left specific instructions to leave me on your doorstep. <laughs> Uh, hey, Nikki. Uh, hey, Gramps. Uh, with a nice jacket. What, your grandparents can't come dressed up for you? Uh, anyways. Uh, so, about the promotion, you both had time to mull it over. You, you want some nuts, Nikki? Uh, no, I'm, I'm fine. So, what do you think? We're good, Nikki. Have some nuts. Uh, no. How do you feel about the promotion? We're very proud. Man. You look hungry. Man, about the promotion. I... We'll be eating dinner soon. Why don't you comb your hair a little next time? Oh, what is going on here? Three days ago I told you about my promotion and now it's like I never... Oh, even... Nikki! What, Nan? How did your hair look? I combed it out into an afro, Nan. Seriously, what is going on with you guys? Well, how old are you, Nikki? What? 29. 29 and no fit. No, you're only eight years older than your Uncle Nicky ever was. What even brought that up? I don't know. I, I was just thinking of him lately.
Man, that's personal information. Actually, she's right. We had a nice conversation right by his phone with that cat. What did you find out to? I don't remember. Um, she bought peppers. Red peppers are green. Never buy red peppers. I had a big argument with the manager about the zucchini. Uh, they're talking about food. Get going. Actually, the a and has a question. What I like to do when I'm working a lot and I don't really have time to cook is I like to saute a little yellow squash, a thin layer of crumble, dash a bit of parmesan, that on rye or Italian bread, preferably fresh from Margotti's bakery, makes the best late night snack. She's our dream come true. This one's, you, this one's for you, Nikki. This one's for you. So, uh, The thing about it is, she actually seemed terrific. When your grandmother sets you up on a blind date, you have every right to be disappointed. So, would you like some veal? Oh, no thank you. I'll just have some vegetables. No, that's some veal. It's from the shop right. Really, I hate I'm a vegetarian. He's a what? Vegetarian. What the hell is that? Animals also. <laughs> what do animals need doctors for? Animal nurse? Trust me on this. Don't try to correct them. Well, whatever it is you do, it sounds very nice. That's the real. Oh, really? I see. No? Not at all? I'm sorry, Ida. I should have told Emma before I came. Uh, no need to apologize. Just have some veal. Man, the veal discussion is closed. She doesn't eat veal. Squash, it looks beautiful from my garden. It looks fabulous. You could serve it to the Pope. The Pope would eat veal too. Man. So, uh, Caitlin, let me ask you a question. Do you drive? Sure, don't you? Very funny you should ask that. He had to stop beginning the accidents. Oh, I've killed hundreds of people. <laughs> <laughs> so, Caitlin, Nikki has a wonderful job. We don't know what the hell he does, but we're damn proud of him. It's no animal doctor, though. Great, shush. Let's get him talk. Very well. Pretend like we're not even here. Like that's even possible. Now nah, he's talking fresh. I'm not talking fresh. He's talking fresh. Quiet, fresh. So, are you enjoying your time here, Caitlin? Absolutely. You should definitely come again. How about um next Sunday? Oh, we eat, we eat together every Sunday. We're a family. <laughs> You know, next time, why don't you bring your drink dance? Oh, thank you, Caitlin. Mine is well done. Oh, oh But you know what? Now you have us. Thank you. So, Caitlin, um, you go to therapy like Nikki? Um, well, yeah, I do go. It's two years. I like it. How would you seem so neutral? Internet. Nikki says all his friends go to therapy. Okay, I know it's only the first course, but does anybody else have any personal revelations about me they'd like to share? Bedwetting memories, anything at all? I think there's no need to. Should we tell the rattle story? Yes, Ooh. yes. Ooh. Isn't that just a wonderful story? When Nikki was a little baby, she used to chew on his rattle. It was so cute, and he wears his little blue underwear. And it was <laughs> oh, he also got caught smoking dope in the ah, what, 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 I thought we were telling stories. <laughs> I have to say, this is going wonderful. From now on, I'm inviting all four of you on my dates. Oh, I bet you all are terrific on I bet you all are amazing dancers. We're not really amazing dancers, but we try. Let's show you how it's done. <laughs> Can somebody please pass me the salt? And a weapon! So all throughout this beautiful meal, we had a wonderful meal, eggplant on the side, we had ravioli as well, and then we got coffee with ricotta cheesecake and fresh baked anise cookies. And all throughout this beautiful meal, I looked at my beautiful grandson and the wonderful one, woman sitting next to him and I thought, yes, yes, he had found his reason to stay. You know, Kate, we really like you. You all 
Did any of you take into consideration how your sneaky little plan, which didn't work, by the way, was infringing on my own life? Hell no. And exactly what kind of plan was that? What did you expect? For us to meet up and fall in love and spend the rest of our lives together? Yes. Well, it doesn't work that way. But it happened to us. That was 150 years ago. Today we do, we do things different. We have careers and ambitions, and we fall in love with people who we choose, who we pick, when we're damn good and ready. Well, that's the problem right there. But no, you people. You people did what you wanted because you want me to live my life your way. Well, you know what? Maybe I don't want to get married. That's crazy. I'm talking. Maybe I need to find out what I'm about. Maybe I like my life the way I made it. What? You know, I know why my parents and Melissa really moved. It's because they want to live a life without constant interference and judgment and criticism. Oh yeah, I was feeling all guilty about the whole moving to Seattle thing, thinking maybe I shouldn't do it because then I'd be leaving you guys. But you know what? No guilt. I'm home free. I'm out of here. You, you, don't, you don't know what you're saying right now. In one month, I'm going to get on that plane and fly to a new life and live it the way I want to live it and date the women I want to date. Not relatives of my names can ask the party. And I'm gonna go to therapy if I want. And I'm gonna eat Chinese food if I want. Hell, I'm gonna go to therapy and eat Chinese food there. Because you know what? And this might be a shock to you all, but at the end of the day, I am an adult. Yes, there is a fully grown, fully functioning grown man standing in front of you who is perfectly capable of taking care taking care of Nikki? Nikki? Nicholas! Nikki! Oh, it's a heart attack! Somebody call an ambulance! No, no, we can get him there faster. All right, Emma, go open the door. Ida, go open the car door. Nikki. Nance, you're gonna help me carry him. I drive! Are you crazy? <laughs> so, I drove my grandson to the hospital. And I didn't hit anybody or anything. <laughs> and this was under great stress, because I thought my grandson was having a heart attack. Turns out he did have an attack, a panic attack, they called it. <laughs> so they advised him to get rid of anything that was causing any unnecessary stress in his life. So we thought, what better way than to have him stay with us? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> ah, ah, ah. <laughs> You ever hear that old, old song? Over the river and through the woods, to grandmother's house we go. Such a happy song. Those people going to visit their grandparents, they're singing and dancing. Nicholas, what else can I get you to eat? Man, you've been feeding me nonstop for two days now, but can you open a window? It's hot in here. I don't want you to feel a trap. <laughs> Like a sauna in here, but yeah. Fine. If you want to spin a blanket, I'll get you a spin a blanket. Oh, and the other nanny and grandpa are coming over for Kenobi later. And before they get here, Nicholas, Seattle, you really might not go, right? What? Look, I mean, if you were so sure you wanted to go, you wouldn't have gotten so upset, so sick. Man, I'm sorry. I Nicholas, Remember when you were yelling at us? And, you know, all I could think was, maybe you are absolutely 100% sure that you want to go to Seattle, right? But at the same time, maybe you're absolutely not 100% sure. No, man, that, that's not true. Look, when you were yelling at us about how your parents were moving away because they didn't want to be around us, it wasn't because they didn't want to be around us, Nicholas. They saw their lives being spent in one place. They saw themselves growing old, never being anywhere else. And they got afraid. That's, that's not true, Nan. They, they just wanted to live in sunshine, too. Nicholas, people don't move away from their families because of weather. No. They got afraid. And maybe you ought to. They'll be here soon. I could be a hundred percent wrong. Just all, all wrong. But I'm not. <laughs> Nicholas. 
Nikki, you're looking good. Hey, man, hey, Krabs. How are you feeling? Uh, fine. You fine. gave us a scare collapsing like that. I, I know, Nick. I, I'm sorry. So? I got you a mask on. Thin 30, faint in. Long way from Tuesday, okay? They're gonna have to name this church after me soon. Well, Nikki, don't do that to us again. We're old. We're the ones that are supposed to be getting sick, not you. Good God. I have the perfect way for you to relax. Come to vacation with us. Whoa, well, hey. Vacation? Yep, we're taking another one of those Mario Perello tours next month. Again with the Perello tours? What? I thought you enjoyed it last year. But you always want to go somewhere. You get on the bus, you get off the bus, you take a picture. You get on the bus, you get off the bus, and you take a picture. It was exhausting. Maybe you'll meet a nice girl on the tour. On the Perello tour? <coughs> All the girls are like 80 years old. Mario Perello is Mr. Italy, OK? I don't think this trip really sounds relaxing. Nicholas is getting hot. I got him another blanket. Ah, oh, it's perfect in here. <laughs> Oh. 
long enough so he had to stay. So we couldn't leave. So I could take care of him. You want to help them so much, like when they were little. It doesn't matter how old they get. You just always want to help. Another shot. Come on, Nikki. <laughs> All right. Who was appointed U.S. ambassador to Spain in 1842? Oh, God. Give us another. Wait, no, 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 no. I know this one. I know this one. You do not. Yes, I do. When you and that Mario Perello, y'all dragged me to Spain, and I saw this statue about this guy. I know this one. Then what's the answer? Okay, okay. Uh, ooh. Uh, who's your girlfriend? Uh, the one who's married to the guy who steals the cars. Irene. All right, now, uh, what's Irene's sister's name? Which one? Uh, the one who drinks. They all drink. The one who isn't fat. Irma. Yeah, yeah, Irma. Uh, so remember when we saw Irma at the uh, ShopRite, and there was this deal going on in the frozen food section. That was Food Town. No, it was ShopRite. No, because Food Town has the bikes to get one free sale. Shoprite has a double coupon. Half my kids the one with the big fish in the window. Anyways, keep going. Uh, all right, all right. Uh, so remember, uh, what's her name? Uh, Irma, Irma. Remember when we saw Irma? We was impressed because she wasn't drunk, and the guy he had no teeth in his mouth. <laughs> uh, what's the guy's name? Uh, something, something. Yeah, it was a Jewish name. It was a Jewish name. Uh, what's a Jewish name? I uh, What do we know that's Jewish? We know Henny Youngman. Oh, it's like Henny Youngman, but it's no, it's something like that. Oh, uh, Sid Caesar. No. Uh, <laughs> Milton Pearl. No. Shady <laughs> Green. Grant, you got the answer? Oh, I'm caught up in the excitement. You know what? Is it Merv Griffin? Wait, it's something like that. It's like Merv, 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 Merv Irvin, Irvin, Irvin. So, the Washington ambassador, Washington Irvin. backyard, 
and serenade her. This story is not true. Would you let me tell the story? The story is actually true. Actually, he's never met me. His, his father came to my father. My father talked to him. His father talked to my father again. And then both of our fathers told us we were getting married. Can't you just let me tell the story the way I want? It happened over 60 years ago. Go all right. Ahead. All right, so uh, it all started when I saw your grandmother at this street corner. She was waiting for a bus. Uh, naturally, I couldn't speak to her. So I just waited for her until the bus came to pick her up. I was the most popular, most prettiest, most eligible girl in the whole entire neighborhood. What? If you're telling the story the way you want, I'm telling the story the way I want. <laughs> OK, OK, yo. Uh, well, as the day went by, I waited more and more until another bus returned into the same spot. And when she went home, I followed her. And every night, I would go under her window, and I would sing the same exact song for a month straight. Wait! <laughs> take me out on the town and on the canopies would appear this festival and there there would be these vendors with these toys and I can't remember exactly what the toys were but what I do remember is the colors. I mean you had reds and, and blues and oranges. It was, it was like a rainbow of toys. And you know my father he'd take me to every single card and we'd get to the first one and I point at the biggest and brightest thing I ever saw and say no. So we go to the next one and I don't know why I thought it would change, but I point to the biggest and brightest toy and he'd say, no again. You know, we'd go from cart to cart and till we got to the last one and he'd buy me some little gray toy I barely even wanted. 
And I'd start crying, and he'd take me in the house. And you know, I always hated him for that. Resented him for it. And then, you know, one day on the job, uh, I found out he got hit in the net. And hit his head, and I just started thinking. They never found him. You know, every, every holiday after that, uh, I made an effort to take your mother out. And, you know, there the vendors were like they never left. And she pointed to anything she wanted, and I did it for her. And I, I tell the family, and, you know, they tell me that that's what your father wished he could do for you. He barely had enough money to put food on the table for Thanksgiving. I'm not good with words, Nick, but you know, it's just really hard for us to see you go. You really need it. Again, I'm sick. It only lasts a few seconds, but it feels like a little gift. I told my Emma. The first time I cried about it was when she cried. And I made a promise to not tell anybody that's for me to do. But what I learned in life it was, is what matters is family. What matters is family. Hitting her face, or the way she was standing, or the fact. 
fact that the girl who rejected me came back to apologize. I don't know. But in that moment, she struck me as the most intelligent and beautiful woman on the planet. And I wanted her to like me so much. And for a second, I, I had a horrible thought. Could my grandmother actually be right? Do I really not want to move? Is, is all I need to be happy the right woman? Oh my god. Uh, yeah, a promotion. Sorry. Do you know anybody there? Uh, no, just a promotion. Well then. Yeah. Well, I gotta go. I have a shift in half an hour now. So can I also meet your nurse? Uh, Caitlin, I, I know you, I know you already said no, but I still like to go on that date. You know, no relatives. I've been thinking about it. not going. I'm sorry, Nick. It's just be too weird. I, I'd sit there the whole time hoping I didn't like you. I can't do that. Bye. Yes, sir. That's my baby. No, sir. I don't mean a baby. <laughs> <laughs> that song work? It's golden. been together for 55 years. Close your eyes and imagine them. 55 years. And that's what Nikki just doesn't understand. He keeps planning his life, trying to run away from marriage, and he, he's missing the opportunity of feeling that love can deepen into places you've never expected before. 50 Five years. Spend 
more time like that in the next few weeks. I'm taking the promotion, man. I leave in a month. Thank you. It, it's not so bad, you know? It's not a bad plane ride, so you can all visit all you want. The promotion, it, it's just too good. I, I've worked too hard for it. This could be the start of something so exciting for I just appreciate it if you understand. No. No, Nicholas. I don't understand. Nan. I... Nicholas, how can you leave us like that? I mean, everything is here, Nicholas. Your family is here, Nicholas. Why does everyone get so afraid? I mean, how can you leave us like that, Nicholas? How can you? After your sister, your mother, your, your father? Everyone has left us, Nicholas. How can you just leave? How can you just Man, leave? Wait, Dan, I'm, I'm sorry. Cramps, come on. You know I never... I mean, Nick, what do you want us to say? I mean, go, we have our blessing. No, we can't do that. Because no matter what we say, what anyone says, you're going to leave us. And you know, I wish I could just stand on the shore and watch you sail away and know it's for the better, but... Nikki, your grandfather has something to tell you. I'm up. He has something to tell you that's very important. What is it, Gramps? Talk to the porch.
With all the hassles that changing both jobs and cities bring, I had little time to spend with them in those final few weeks. And that last Sunday seemed to arrive so quickly, I, I wish I knew what the formula was. How much do you owe those who care for you? How much can you repay them for their devotion? Will it ever be enough? Nikki, if you didn't notice, uh, in your honor, your grandfather turned on the air conditioning. I felt like I could breathe. <laughs> that was a beautiful meal. Was it Nicholas? Stunning, man. Oh, uh, here, before I forget, I got your mask card. I wouldn't have left town without one, man. <laughs> so, did your grandfather tell you? Uh, what? in the car. No, he, he didn't mention. He was driving his mandolin lesson. Next thing you know, he runs into a, he, he, he dented the back fender. Guess how? Pulling out the garage. <laughs> he didn't even make it out to the streets. Thank God no one was killed. Brad, can't tell you yourself in the car. Yeah, I'm bored with driving. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, grandson. I wouldn't have been worried about you. Don't you ever worry about me, Nikki. Well, taxi should be here any minute now, so go grab my things. I don't think you can take that on the plane, man. Why not? It just seems like something you can't do. Some provolone would be nice. <laughs> Said they knew about it before I left, but 
They didn't want to burden me with anything. Burden me? How could they not have said anything? Anything at all? If at least one of them would have said something, no question I would have stayed. A few years after Nicholas left, my Frank, my baby, passed on. Emma and I shared dinner every, every day after that. Until she too suffered a severe stroke. God bless them. I still make myself two meals a day. And on Sundays, I make myself a little something special. And I still get to see my Nicholas. Thanks to his new job, he flies to New York often. And he always gives his grandmother a visit. Man, it's me. Nicholas! You look hungry, but you look like I'm the water. Uh, actually, man, let's not eat. Let's sit and talk. The ravioli looks beautiful, Nicholas. <laughs> and I'm moving. Back home? Uh, to Portland. But what about Teresa? Well, she's going to be staying in Seattle. Okay. But you're engaged. Well, we'll be flying back and forth on weekends. It's called a communal relationship, man. It's very modern, very annoying. Man. I want you to move with me to Portland. It's honestly a beautiful city. Nicholas. Man, your whole life you've been here, taking care of Gramps and everybody else. Come with me. You won't have to take care of anybody else. And if you want, I'll take you out every Sunday to eat. I'd love to give that to you, man. There's no one here for you anymore. Nicholas, you know where I've always wanted to go for years and years? Atlantic City. None of them always came back with but your grandfather would take no part in such a fancy play. But one day, I left him a plate in the ice box. And I went. And you know what? I didn't like it. No, not one bit. Oh, my Atlantic City was horrible without your grandfather. The whole time I was there, I was wishing I was there taking care of him. Your grandfather needed me so much. I mean, he had no one here to take care of him. How many people at my age can say someone needed them that much? Nicholas, I can. So, I came back. Nicholas, your grandfather built this house for me. My memories are here. I can't leave, Nicholas. I can't. So please, stay for this. Okay. Not long after, I achieved what my grandparents would name to be the greatest achievement of all time. I married. Tango for me. Mm -hmm. And now as me and Teresa sit in our new home in Portland, awaiting the birth of our first child, my mind often wanders back to those final days I spent with my grandparents. And how I wish I could neatly sum up who they were and what they meant to me and how they fit into the puzzle of my life. But instead, what was most clear to me is that my grandparents spent every day working hard to ensure that their children were more successful and educated than them. But what they didn't foresee was that they would elevate me to a life so far removed from their own that they wouldn't even be able, be able to understand what I was doing and how I was continuing their legacy. And when I look back, I too see a vague reflection of myself. But yet, they still let me go. They got me to laugh. And to this day, I still get great food in the mail. Everything came beautiful.